Hi, I'm Robert Noel. Well, I hope you're ready for a multi-adventure. This is great for beginners in learning a 12-bar blues. It's going to be a review for intermediate and advanced students, but we're dealing with 12-bar blues. We're dealing with the key of A, but we're also dealing with seventh chords, the dominant seven. You should know a A major scale, and likewise, you should know an A dominant seven scale. So your, your A scale, with the three sharps. One, two, three. Your major third is your C sharp. Your perfect four, which the four chord is based on D, is D. Your D7. <laughs> four, five. Your five chord is going to be based on this E, the E7 chord. And then in the major scale, we have the major seven, which is F sharp. Instead of having the F sharp, you're going to be dealing with G, which means that we're flatting the seven, the G sharp. That's your major seven, right? But we're flatting the seven. So that's giving us the dominant seven chord. Right? One, two, three, four, five. So what's really important is that you are starting to learn about intervals in your scale. So what makes a dominant seven scale? The major seven is flatted. So we have what's called a minor seven, or we'll call it a dominant seven. Same thing. We want to be able to see in our chords the intervals besides the note names to really be able to analyze our chords and come up with a lot of variations to really make this adventure great. You've got to have some understanding about music theory, okay? Keeping it basic, we're going to be doing 12-bar blues, a very basic version where we go A7, quick change to D7, back to A7, and the D7, the E7 comes in, the five chord, and then our turnaround is basically A7, D7, A7, E7. Those are the last two measures, 11th and 12th. And you'll see on the chart that I have here, okay? I provided you from iReal. And if you don't have iReal, you should have that application because I can send you actually the, the backing track that I have and you'll be able to put it in a playlist in your iReal application real Pro. So our one chord, we're in the key of A, so that's going to be A7. When we go to the four chord, that's going to be your D7. And your five chord is going to be your E7. So basically on the chart, you're going to see the basic A7 chord. And if I was to analyze that, of course, I got the root A, I got the perfect fifth. The G open is the seven, the dominant seven or minor seven. The C sharp is the major third, and then E is the perfect fifth. So I've got two perfect fifths and the root A. Now I could have an open E in the bottom. That would be another perfect fifth in the bottom. But when I strum that, it's really huge. That would be an inversion. And we'll talk about inversions later. But just knowing that you have those three notes, you have your A root, you have your C sharp major third, and you have your E as your perfect fifth, and then the seven that we're talking about today is your G note, the dominant seven, minor seven. So when I look at this A7 chord, I got G. I'm using this fingering that's really basic. You don't want to do one, two. You want to do two, three. Uh, second finger on the E, third finger on the C sharp. This allows me to get the fourth finger on the seven. And I've also got the G. I've got two sevens in this chord. So when you analyze it, you understand the chord. What if, what if I did do this differently? Well, then I would have access to other notes that might be a reason why I would do a different fingering. But back to the two, three fingering. What if I added G in the bottom? Ooh, I get a dominant seven, minor seven in the bottom of the chord. Sounds really big and fat. I can have the seven here. I've got the G as a seven. So, you know, I could theoretically do a G like this, an E, have my root, my third, 
and I could do a, a chord that would have uh, the two sevens and also include a root in the middle. So there's variations. When we start looking at the fingering, what are the possibilities calling this an open A7 chord? What can we do with it? Well, I, I could add the fifth, which is the E in the bass, the open E string. I could uh, strum this as a four note chord from the E. I could even strum it as a three note chord, but I want to be able to add that seven, understanding where my sevens are. And I could have that fifth, and if I was doing a rhythm, I could be uh, doing a rhythm where maybe I'm not just strumming, things with those bass notes, actually putting a bass line that is built around the intervals of the A7 chord. Take a look at the types of A7s I'm playing and look at the intervals. You need to understand intervals and note names. When we go to your D7 chord, it's that basic D7, that triangular shape. And make sure that your finger placement is good. You always want to be hugging the frets. I see a lot of videos by a lot of other guitar teachers out there and they're showing you some cool stuff sometimes but i look at them and i go wow they don't know what finger placement's about they don't hug the frets their fingers are just anywhere they want to put them so that's something to really tell when you look at other guitar teachers videos look at the finger placement is the teacher really a good guitar player does he have good finger placement is he hugging the frets whenever he plays if he isn't then he's probably sloppy and just was never told that, hey, this is how you're supposed to play guitar in the orthodox manner. I got a little sidetracked there, but I want to get back to that D7 chord. So D7, there's not a lot we can do with the chord form because D is your root, all right? You've got, if you were to play a D form five dominant seven scale, one, two, three, four, five, A is the fifth in the D7 chord, and you would go one, two, three, four, five, six, and then your seven would be your C note in that D7 chord. So you got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven is your dominant, that's your D, and then you're back to root, okay? So you got a root, a fifth, and if you paid attention, one, two, three, F sharp is your major third. So that top note in your D7 is your major third, making this chord major. Here's your D7. Well, what else could I do? Well, I've got my fourth finger available. If I took put another C in here, I would be putting a seven, minor seven, or dominant seven in the bass. So that makes for an interesting D7 chord. Wow. If I put A in there and I strum five strings, well, I'm just adding the perfect fifth. So that makes for a fat five D7. If I added my thumb down here in unorthodox, that would put a major third in the bottom and more, make that D7 really warm. God, I could get crazy and even add the seven in there, dominant. Now I've got a really crazy six note chord. So you want to check your notes. Always make sure you got, if you're playing a four note D7, make sure. All those notes are coming out. There's your five note. There's your six note. You just learned that there's some other D7s you can do. Just holding the same pattern, I was able to come up with a whole bunch of other D7s just by adding fingers, knowing where the major third is, the F sharp, knowing that the A note is my fifth, and realizing that my seven is the C note. So I came up with all kinds of D7s there. When we get to the five chord, E7, now remember, I'm gonna refer sometimes to A7 as the one chord, one, two, three, four, A, B, C, D is the four chord, and the five chord, A, B, C, D, E, one, two, three, four, five is the E7. So a basic E7, if I was just to play an E chord, not an E minor, E7, and add a seven, the seven, 
the E chord, if I add my baby finger on D, that's adding to seven. So if I was to and play a D seven, a dominant seven open scale, I would be able to see what my intervals are in the E7. One, two, three, my G sharp is my third. B is my fifth. And then my dominant seven would be my D note. So I add the D to E chord. Got that big, full, very popular E7 chord. Just sounds great. But I could take the uh, third finger off the E on the fourth string, and I'd have another D in there, which gives me two sevens in this chord. So I would say that's a very thick seven chord, E7. So you can put the experiment with putting the third finger in and out, E or a seven. So what if, um, let's see, what else could I do? If I added a G sharp up here, well, that's adding a third, and I'd have to have the open D in there. So there's a very lovely E7. Wow. Big it. Would it be possible for me to another G sharp? Well, if my fingers were a little bigger, I could probably do it. Maybe you can do it. I could have a G sharp in the bottom, which would uh, give me that major third. So there are some limitations. We're dealing with this shape of an E chord, or an E7 chord, the plain E7 chord would just be open E, second finger, open D, first finger, G sharp, open B and E. But we know we can add the D in there, which is the, is the seven. So once you've started to analyze your chords and realize what intervals are in your chords, where is the root? Where is the major third that you gotta have? Where's the perfect fifth? We need to have. And then where is the dominant seven? Now we can change where those intervals are in order in the chord. When we do that, we're playing inversions. When we do the major third in the bottom or the perfect fifth, we start coming up with what we call second and third inversion. This is something we'll be studying in the future. I'll be doing, giving you some charts on this. But right now we're really looking at the chord and analyzing each chord. Now, when I go to play that rhythm, that 12 bar, 12 bar blues, I could be, have a shuffle in the background or whatever. I'm dealing with the rhythm, the basic rhythm. So if I'm dealing with A7, I'm just going to do a basic down up strum and try to make that chord sound nice. One and two and three. And then my D7, two and three, four and one and two. Add that seven with the G, two, three, four, then my D7. How about if I add the C? Ooh, seven in the bass. Back to A7. I'm gonna add the G in the bottom. Ooh. How about the E7? Add the D, the D7, just regular, and my turnaround. Basically A7, D7. A7, E7, and then I'm back. As I played that, I was knowing what I was doing with each of those chords because I've been analyzing. I know where the root, the major third, the perfect fifth is, what note name it is, and what interval. Intervals are really important. You can do a search and you'll find uh, my interval videos, okay? I wanted to, at this point, to tell you that uh, doing a lot of videos into this uh, season coming up and uh, we're going to be continuing with the blues progressions we're going to be not only doing dominant but minor and major the three family so i'm really digging in and trying to get you to understand what i call guitar philosophy the trilogy or the trinity the religious thing of guitar would be chord scale arpeggio and how they all work together so this is really, really cool, okay? When you get into this theory, understanding the fretboard, all this comes together. If you're at my guitar time for you on YouTube site, I hope you hit that like button. That's really important. And I hope you subscribe, okay? Because this is a freebie lesson for you, okay? And the more in-depth lessons are on my Patreon, but I want to gift you. I want to be able to give as much free stuff as possible. But if you really want to help Robert out by going to my Patreon, the Guitar Zone, which I call my guitar family, become part of my family, you would come in 
at one of the tier levels, and there's a whole bunch of them. I think the basic tier level is uh, five bucks, okay? Five bucks a month, you get access to hundreds of charts and hundreds of videos, a weekly guitar lesson for 53 weeks, okay? I've got that in there for basics. I've got more advanced videos, uh, more detail in blues, the great blues heroes, uh, the Albert Collins, the Albert King, the B.B. King, even getting into the Delta Blues of John, Mississippi John Hurt, Big Bill Brunsey, Skip James, those kind of guys too. This is just a little break. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the like button. That helps me out a lot right now. But if you're on the Patreon, I want to thank you so much for joining, being part of the, my guitar family. It really helps me out. And hopefully in the future financially, which I'll probably tell you about my blues sometime with that, but you're really helping me be able to exist, to have a place to live and to keep these videos going. And be as I am, I know I'm just like everyone out there. I'm trying to blend in, you know, but uh, I come from the ancient hippie days and all right, I want you to um, stay tuned for this series because I'm going to be getting deeper into it. We're dealing right now with the the seventh chords in open position. And this is where I want you to go on some journeys, make some discoveries with understanding your seventh chords for your one chord, your four chord D7, and E7, your five chord, your one, four, five. You got to know what notes are in those chords and what intervals are in those chords. And then you can start dis making discoveries of putting, finding another root to put in there, another five, taking a five out, putting it somewhere else, or the seven, or the major third. So this is how you start understanding the theory, the science of music, science of guitar, okay? It goes deeper than even that. So when I go to start playing solos and stuff like that, I'll get into much later, but... <laughs> When I do those bass lines, I know what I'm doing here. I know what I'm doing, M minor third and off the E. But what am I doing off of A? It's the fifth. And then the dominant seven. So I'm understanding bass lines, but I'm also standing. Seven, fifth. And I'm understanding, I'm seeing how my arpeggios and my riffs fit within the forms. So this gets us into a lot uh, deeper journeys, but I'm doing videos on these so you start to understand and practice and start to really learn, okay? So that basic 12-bar blues, once again, you would be practicing it to beginning just staying with open chords. What is everything you can do with those three open chords? Then eventually, you're going to go to each form and go, well, what can I do in form one? What chords are within form one? What chords are within form two? What chords transcend into form three? A7s. How about form four? What are my A7 chords in form five? Right? Back to form one. When I know my seventh chords in five forms with the open chords, I can play A7s everywhere, and likewise D7s and E7s. So instead of just playing in the same chords and the same thing, it kind of gets boring. It's monotonous. It's what most guitar players do. But the better guitar players know that, hey, there's a lot of A7s and D7s and E7s. And not to only mention that I can get into my rhythms a little bit more. I did that basic rhythm earlier. <laughs> One and two and three and four and but I go one two and three and four one two three and four and one two three and four I'm adding a seven my D seven my A seven two three and four and two three and four and two I'm 
phrasing my rhythm. This is other videos up that I'll be doing soon for you about phrasing, phrasing your rhythms. How do we look at a rhythm in a slow feeling rhythm? Getting into that slow groove that's so important in the blues. And then the, the medium, the groovy. Just getting creative. One, two, three, four, and one. Two and three and four. One, two, three, four. And one, two, and three and four. Two. So now I'm I'm doing all kinds of things. I'm muting. I'm I'm doing I'm phrasing just like how I talk slow. Or if I talk at the medium. But sometimes people talk real fast, you know, they talk like this, and you go, dude, miss, can you slow down so I can understand you? You know, sometimes fast is not good. Sometimes, though, fast is good if you do it in different dynamics. Low, soft, medium, loud, in your face, attitude. There's all kinds of stuff to do with rhythms that I'm going to be talking about in future videos. All right, so I think I've given you enough to deal with on this video. I hope uh, you're always welcome to... I hope you hit that subscribe and like button, but you can also email me. And if you have a question, I'll try to get back to you, okay, and answer your questions. So that would be good, especially when you join my Guitar Zone. You're part of my guitar family, okay, my Guitar Zone family. And when you're in the family, then I can really pay some attention to you and spend some time with you if you need some understanding or me to go over something with you personally, okay? All right, well, hey. We're doing some really cool stuff here. There's going to be a lot of videos that follow it in this adventure of seventh chords. Once we've done seventh chords, we will probably do ninth chords. And then we'll do altered chords. And we'll do major chords and major nines and major sevens. We're, we've got all these families of chords that we're going to be dealing with. But right now, let's just deal with the seventh family, sevens. What do we do with that? in the dominant chord family, okay? Dominant chord family, we have a minor chord family, and we have a major chord family. That's three families that we've got to get really good at. But let's absorb, let's soak in and, and try to really understand and get into the dominant seven chords. The minor seven, taking the major seven and making it a minor seven in the scale, okay? You would do that with the arpeggio as well. And now you understand what a seventh chord is, okay? Now, there's major seven. That's a different seven. Major seven chord is different. Dominant seven, minor seven. That's what we're dealing with right now. Okay, Robert Noel saying, hey, stay on the journey with me. I really want to teach you guitar. I want you to be really, really good. And I want to be the guy that, hey, that, that hippie, that, that Robert Noel guy, he, you know, he, he had me in his hippie pad, and I go in there, and he, I'm, I'm with his hippies, and, and he, he's teaching me, and I'm learning from this guy. It's way groovy. <laughs> All right.